I love Guinness. You know what else I love? I, I love my bank account. And uh, what's gotten me a big bank account is under Starters Orders Podcast. All the tips from the guys, Deco, Andy, Chris. It's just the best podcast around. Evening, everybody. Chris is back this week. It's good to be back too because we've missed a you know difficult weekend's re- racing last weekend. Um, sincere condolences to you know obviously our Queen and Jack De Bromren. Sorry, I couldn't make it myself. Um, but I'm here this week, and we've got some good action this weekend. Nice handicap. Uh, I do love the Ergo Cup meeting. I'm sure that Stephen, who's with me, will also echo that. Hello, Steve. How you doing, mate? You all right? How you doing? What do you think about the Ergo Cup meeting, mate? It's, that's not well back out. It's been a great meeting over the years, isn't it? I think the trouble is when you're sandwiched in between sort of last week and the week before, it sort of takes a bit of gloss off it. But it's, yeah. over the years, it's been a fantastic meeting, big betting heat, and uh, yeah. nobody backs you up well, you know. Yeah, don't you worry. I think I've got the winner of the silver cup anyway. Uh. <laughs> Glad you have. <laughs> Jesus Christ. If you get the winner of that, Jesus Christ. Uh, you might notice that we're not with Andy and Declan are both not here this week. Um, Declan's off in Paris. Andy just couldn't make it this week. But we may as well just play this just, you know, for Declan's sake. I fucking love Ireland. I fucking love Ireland. You have to play that, don't you, while Declan's not here. He'll probably turn up in a bit from, from France, you know, tanked up on the ale. George will probably drop in as well. We do have a nice replacement in there. Sam's with her. Hello, Sam. Hello, how are you? Yeah, good to you, Sam. Nice to see you back. Good. Thank you very much for having me. Much Excellent. appreciated. How, how are we doing? What's, what's, what's going on? I know you were treating before about the Racing League finishing and uh, you were at the first leg, weren't you? I was, yeah. I uh, had a press badge for that. Um, so that was very exciting. I think it's a great concept. Um, I think it'll be something interesting to pick Oshie Murphy's brains about. Um I think it's a very, uh, like the prize money on offer is incredible. And I don't see how anyone can dislike that with what we've got going on in the game at the minute. Um, but now I'm good, thank you. Uh, it's good to be back talking about racing. I've been talking a lot about um, university applications at the minute. Um, uh, so how's that going? Nice evening discussing horses. How's the university going, the uh, applications going? Yeah, it's going okay. Um, I've got a deadline for bits and pieces tomorrow so i've just finished off all that <laughs> yeah god those deadlines eh? those deadlines uh thanks for joining us anyway sam it's me sam and steve this week um hopefully we've got five races coming this week we've got two from newbury and three from her but hopefully i, I mean I th- you can see him sitting in the background but he won't be on his video tonight but he is on his order i think he's drawing driving back from well he's going to london oshin can you hear us Good evening, guys. Everyone. Hey, Oshin, how you doing, buddy? Very well. Very well. That's good. How's things with yourself? Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, uh, I've been riding out plenty this week. Very sad the last couple of days. Um, you know, mm. ten days with Jack De Bruyne. I'm had to see the Queen. Mm. Uh, Mrs. Uh, there's been a lot of sad stories in British and Irish racing. Uh, yeah. Uh, so hopefully we can look forward to the weekend. There's good um, and uh, uh, plenty of horses to look. For. Now Oshin's obviously driving at the moment, so his signal's not going to be the best. But I want, if you can hear me, Oshin, and you had you have a did you have a few rides for the Queen, Oshin? What's your your memory, your best memory, would you say, of riding for the Queen? Yeah, I've ridden quite a lot for the Queen. Um, I trains plenty for her, as did Michael Bell. Um, and uh, I, I won on tactical. Prince Philip passed away. Um, I used to partner King's Lynn quite regularly. 
that's true. That's true, you did. Um, how's the show jumping going? Because I've seen a lot of videos of you show jumping. You've got your own little horse now, haven't you, show jumper? Yeah, I've got a few. Uh, I've got a few guys. I value them too much. I'm not a very good. Um, I'm looking at all these guys who are to be like them. Uh, but it's, it's been great fun, and I've been for horse racing, but it's given me something to need to focus on and uh, enjoy. You know. Of course, we we do anticipate you. You, I mean, we're all. Eager to have you back in February, Oshin. I mean, how how are you coping with your time? What what have you been up to? I mean, I know you're doing the show jumping, but what else have you been up to in your time off? So I had the riding, uh, which is obviously good. For, it's something to do do for four or five hours, and I gain I gain as much out of adults do that show up. You know, and I normally have counseling twice a week once once over zoom uh, mm. so that and i ride out quite a bit in the morning so i mean once a week i've been to newmarket quite a bit in the morning it, i t tend to travel around a lot with the children i've been over and back mm. so guys it's obviously been very used to uh, uh, yeah. but i've tried to make you know keep up up my relationships within racing and uh, enjoy the children. Yeah, is it not? Is it not something, Oshin? That um, I believe I read in a racing post article recently that Nikki Henderson offered you a jumps license. Is that is that the case? Yes, he did, uh, which is very. Kind of that was slightly joking. Uh, uh, I'm, but look, look, one day I would, would actually. Uh, are, are a couple, but I was riding over the jump. He's incredibly talented. I'm not going to walk in and set the world alight to knock it off my CV. Like Richard Hughes, my Joseph O'Brien in recent years had had a couple of turned into the training full time. Pretty cool idea, but, but obviously, I'd want to be on a pretty Horse and hopefully it could be healthy. Yeah, I think I got the gist of that there, Roshin, because your signal keeps cutting in and out. I think uh, it, it will, it's great to hear you. I mean, I, I believe you're on a trip to the Melbourne Cup, is that right? Yes, uh, I was apprenticed there uh, the winter of 2013. And I just feel like because the prize money in Australia is an all time high, uh, Trading horse to Australia is going to continue. My riding career, that, that's what I'd like to do. I want to maintain those relationships with the trainers. That cuts out then. That cuts out there, not uh, Where are you off to this weekend? I don't know if you can hear me, but you have to look um, what what's the plans this weekend. Are you watching Chelsea again? Get beat? <laughs> but Chelsea draw with Salzburg last night with my yeah. father lands tomorrow uh, so I'll pick him up and he'll come and uh, me a blend him up over the weekend <laughs> nice uh, Sam, uh, Steve, you got any questions for Oshin, Sam? Uh, I did just want to ask you about a horse um, who made his debut earlier in the week for Qatar, uh, zoology. What did you make of that? Wow. Middle uh, park, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> so I carry on. He was uh, his work before mid June was very nice. Uh, the play a little bit later. James Ferguson's sources of there's a chance zoology could line up in the middle. Little big bear uh, uh, has. Has back. Um, it, it's likely uh, zoology. Oh, yeah, he shot ahead of a lot of speed, didn't he? Yeah, it was it was a very 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 impressed. Uh, Sam, do you want to continue? Yeah, um, just I was just asking about zoology because 
I remember seeing his dam uh, win at Leicester before she went and won her, her uh, German uh, listed race. So she had instinctive move win first time out as well. Uh, he's not been as good as I hoped he'd be. So I'm hoping zoology can be that little bit better, but it's very exciting if he goes to Middle Park. Um, and as well, I just wanted to ask, what do you make of the racing league? I have an opinion, Sam, because I haven't been part of it. Very, very good decision uh, uh, to, to uh, um, motion behind it, uh, support it, because the prize money is who don't have many opportunities. And, um, and yeah, I, I mean, some people, there's been a lot of stick, but I think... Uh, in charge of it deserves a lot of credit for for, for all go. So. Thanks very much, Oshin. Just had a question once as Oshin. Anna has asked, where are you off shore jumping next? She loves the show show jumping Anna, so she might come and watch you. Where are you next? Well I'm in Kiso next weekend and and the Oshin that just cut out then you're in Kiso next weekend and then where are you? And the week afterwards. And the, week after. and the week afterwards, that's great. Uh, Steve, anything you want to say uh, mention to Oshin? Uh, do you fancy anything in the Air Gold Cup? Uh, um, has a couple running. Yeah. I quite like 5,000 to 1, I ask. Um, okay, 5,000 to 1, one has, uh, he's very well at home. Obviously, compared with every chance. I wouldn't put anyone off having a few maybe to follow at the weekend and is chill chill chill, chill, chill. at Newbury I'm sorry mm. All right. yeah chill chill yeah, Newbury King Power Horse isn't it yeah, yeah, yeah. King Power Horse she's, uh, yeah, we'll uh, definitely keep that she, she she felt super on Wednesday never felt so hopefully that will translate to the race yeah Thanks very much, Josh. Uh, we'll we'll let you go now, buddy. Um, we hope you have a lovely weekend. We'll keep in touch with you, and uh, we can't wait to see you back racing soon. And uh, oh, sorry, I'll, just before you go, Anna, Anna's put on the bottom there. She uh, Kiso's a brilliant venue. See the chatted with you at the Golden Button. Go for it, young man. Enjoy the horses. Anna's put there. So you must have met Anna before. Very much, She's Anna. Lovely. Yeah, thank you very much, Oshin. We can't wait to see you back. Keep in touch, buddy, uh, and safe journey. I'll uh, we'll see you soon, boy. Mate. Guys, take care. Cheers, Oshin. Thank you. Bye. See you, bud. Sam there instead of Oshin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, top man Oshin there. There he was. Um, no, nah, great. Tough as a hard one, isn't it? Yeah, I can't wait to see him. He's so, he's so good with media. And he's brilliant. I think you need in your you need to, you need to handle the media really well. And I think he doesn't. Um, obviously, you mentioned there he's been to all of his AA meetings and things and. Yeah, he's open, isn't he? Yes. Let's on with this week's racing, boys and girls. We are going to start with the Legacy Cup at Newbury this Saturday. It's a pretty decent renewal. Though. If you look at the top of the market, though, we've got three Godolphin horses. Though. We've got the Dubai Futures, the Sani and Kimari. Two for Charlie and one for Saeed. And then we've got Solid Stone, who went last year at sevens. Lysandra and Stale at around the 10 to 11 mark with Fancy Man, Max Baker, and the real the Lady Excalibur for Alan Jones and Paul Hidden at 100 to 1. I was chatting to Steve just before I came on. He's got one that he really likes. So we'll come to you, Stephen, first. Um, where's your money going in this one, mate? Uh, but the market's sort of. The market's pretty much. It's still pretty unknown, isn't it? There's nothing. There's nothing outstandingly yeah. short. Or the three good old horses. You got. You got five, five to two joints and six to one. The outside of the three Kamari. I think he won a Queen's Vars going back a year or so ago. Uh, he sort of then fell off the wagon a little bit. He was last at York in the the Volta Journey. He's not, he sort of slowly got back to form, but not back to the level he was at. But it's hard to know what's like. You like Siskani, didn't you, Chris? But He's not yeah, run since the last couple of runs have been abroad in the Middle East. He's had a long break. It's hard to know what you what you're coming what's coming back. Do you know what I mean? Is he gonna need the run? Has he been waiting for sort of winter ground? What not winter ground, autumn ground, you know, a bit more juice in the ground. 
Mm. It's hard to know. Um, Solid Stone has also always been a big fan of. I've, when I stepped him up in trip last year, I was really, really keen to follow him. And when he, he won at Chester earlier in the year, he beat McGallan and uh, the Paul Coles that won the uh, came to Majestic Dawn. Um, yeah. But he sort of, he, he, they've sort of, they was forcing the tactics with him last year and they've gone back to, they run him in the hard work and it was sort of stop, start, slow things down. It I didn't think, suit, did it? It didn't suit. No, that. it didn't suit. They've done it again last time. I just think they need yeah. to force, force the run. Uh, he beat um, a day, didn't he? The um, the Haggis horse, the bridal horse. Um, mm-hmm. Is it what's it called today? Is it the one that one ask her in here? I can't think of the name, but um, I think if it was a bit more juice in the ground, he'd be, he'd be one to sort of have a look at. But he's got a hell of a lot of weight with nine stone ten. Um, Lysander was spoken about in Derby terms early in the year. He went for the predominant stakes, the Goodwood trial, I think they call it the Cox Hat, uh, or something like that. Now he was third of five. He's had a long, he's had a bit of a break, so. It's hard to know what it'd be interesting to watch the market with him. But the one I like is um Huey Morrison's all stay alert. Uh she's getting weight, age and sex allowance. Um she was pretty progressive earlier in the year. She ran behind Nashbar in a race. Uh, Nashbar was third in the Oaks and then went on to win the Nassau in the pre Deanne. Uh stay alert then won a really nice race. Um Beating a Haggis, Philly, Sea Ross, I think it was. Um, Golden Lyra, yeah. Golden Lyra, sorry. And Golden Lyra was favourite for well, the Gelders last week yeah. at York, uh, beyond, around, around Haskoy, at the Ebor meeting, sorry. And Haskoy obviously ran, ran very well in the ledger last week. But um, Stalert then ran at Haydock um, in that race where Free Wind and Ashada had a, a bit of a bargain match, didn't they? Where Free Wind sort of. Looked like it got completely got, got completely boxed up in the round. Looked like she was going to tail off, and she just sprouted wings and ended up winning by mm. three or four lengths. I'm sort of I'm sort of wondering whether they're going to enter her for the arc. But stay alert. That day was I was keen on that day. Back to that day, but she she broke too well. She was very keen on the outside. She had no cover, and I'm sort of making excuses for her that in the previous races she settled well. She had cover, and she came through late, and she, she had a good turn of foot with stamina as well. I'm going to just, the Haydock race, I just think she had too much daylight. She was too free, too keen. And I think 10 to 1 is a good price considering the weight she's getting. I think, for me, she'd be a good bet against horses where you just don't know what you're going to get, you know. If you buy a future one at Royal Ascot, it's not really, didn't really match up again next time. There's too many ifs and buts against a lot of these. And this is, it's a filly that's only run five times. I just think there could be more improvement in her. Yeah. Cheers, Steve. I uh, can see that, the Haydock run. She's been freshening up a little bit since, hasn't she, so... Yeah, I can see that. Um, a little bit of a trivia question here because I was looking through this and I was interested because it, it it's actually named an, as a previous art trialist, isn't it? Um, I see this might be a question for you, mate. Because can you think back to the last winner of this that actually ran in the arc? Jesus, that's um, a tough question. If anybody in the chat can come up with that one, think back to the last horse that won this race that actually ran in the arc because. Majority. I'm, I'm only reason I'm saying that is because the majority of these horses that seem to win this race seem to go be heading over to Canada in the internationals um, for, at Woodbine. That's in October, and if that's the case, and you think you've got three Godolphin horses at the top here, you are for me. The, one of these Godolphin horses is, I think, tailor made for this, and, and for me, that is Siskane. Siskane. If you go back to the Maidan run back in January, Kimari led them along in that run. Um, this could set up very similar because I don't see a front runner in this. So Kimari could be taking them along. David Probe at the set in the fractions and Siskani just sitting off it. Now, Dubai Future can also sit off it, but he can also be at the back. But looking at the jockey bookings, and I, I always say this because Adam Kirby has a fantastic strike record when he rides for Godolphin. I think a lot of people know this, but you know he does. And with William, he's over in Canada this weekend. Um, James Doyle's somewhere else. So we've got like, Three really not particularly apart from Adam. You've got David Probert riding for riding for Apple Bear. You've got Martin Harley riding for Saeed Ben Saron. Dubai, Dubai Futures Wolverton win for me wasn't particularly amazing. I think Siskani could be tailor made for this. And let's bring the horse back with a bang and then let's send it out to Canada and win the international stakes. So Siskani does it count as horse that's won this and gone out to the Arlington Million, isn't he? In races like that. 
Yeah, I mean, last year's the race, there, um, oh, as, as for art runners, I can't. Elecan won it, he was the, the Shadwell also. Um, mm. uh, was, it, was it Franco out of attraction or something like that, wasn't he? Mm. Um, you have to go back to 1999, Steve, and it was fantastic light for um, fantastic, light light, yeah. Uh, she ran the six in the Irish yeah. champion stakes, yeah. But, she was yeah. lovely, she was a lovely horse, yeah. Well, yes, yeah, I'm gonna go for Siscani in this, I think Siscani. If you can, you know, think that she's ready off that 200 day break, which I think, oh, sorry, I'm saying she, he will be. Um, I think he's a good price at, at four to one for me. I think he's the better one of the four. Um, what about yourself, Sam? I'm going to be really boring. Hmm? Steve's kind of nicked all my selections. My top three, your top three. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just think I've got a couple of interesting points about each horse. Um, I think Solid Stone was really unprofessional before last time. Like, he's six years old. He should know better. So perhaps, because he got a little bit kind of, um, yeah, he just got a bit, just a bit opinionated, I think, um, about yeah, things. Was that, in the, uh, was that at Ascot was like, in the Hardwick? Yeah. Before Windsor. I'm not sure what he did mm. in, in the Hardwick, but I know before Windsor he was a little bit of a monkey. Um, so perhaps he didn't necessarily show his true running then. But, I mean, as a six-year-old with all that weight, we just don't know. Um, and kind of in the opposite end of the scale, like you were saying, stay alert. She's getting so much weight. Got David Egan on board. Um, I noticed in the little comments that just as can see, somebody asked whether Josie right. Gordon was jocked up. Um, and it is a shame that she isn't because um, she does mm. tend to ride in these colours, doesn't she? And she's a very, very capable jockey. Um, but I think, obviously... David Egan's an advantage to any horse he gets on. Um, and I do think uh, he's interesting. And Lysander's getting a tongue tie as well uh, for this, which could eke out a little bit of improvement in him. Obviously really unexposed. Um, ran really good races behind changing of the guard um, last time. So he's still under the could be anything banner, just like stay alert. But I think both of them at the prices are pretty decent. Mm. Thanks very much, Sam. Uh, we'll just go over selections for that race and then we'll swiftly move on to the Mill Reef. So, Steve, you are with? Stay alert. Stay alert. And, Sam, are you with Stay Alert as well? I am, yes. Stay alert. Two selections there for Stay Alert. I am uh, putting my next best of the week on Siskani. I think that the run back in Maidan was a very taking run. And if the horse is ready, which I think they will be, they'll be aiming for Canada. Let's get the win in and let's send them over to Canada where William will ride them to sleep. Siskani for me, four to one. Uh, and then we'll move on to the Mill Reef now, guys. Now, Mill Reef this year is... How are you feeling about it, Steve, about the Mill Reef? Uh, it's hard to know, isn't it? Like, I think in the old days, you'd have... Sort of, I keep saying old days, but you'd have something outstanding which was done something pretty much earlier in the year, but... These are sort of like, sh would you, how do you pronounce that? Hananos? The Hananos should have been a ring. Should have been a ring. Uh, obviously, has the most yeah, experience. Me, Stephen, that is British language, and you're asking me to pronounce it. Do you know the story? I don't no, know the story. On. That'd be a nice story. Go on, Sam, take over. Um, so it's obviously Midland Park, so there's plenty of owners. Um, and there was a couple, and they got engaged, and they decided to buy into the horse instead of buying an engagement ring. So oh, wow. they were allowed to pick the name. That's why he's called Should Have Been a Ring. That, that's oh, a great story. Yeah, that's there's um, I don't know if any, anyone will be able to find it. After his win at Ripon, um, there's a lovely little interview with the couple talking about mm. it. I'll have to look for that because I do like re I do like things like that. It just it, it it's quite heartwarming, isn't it? Just things like that. It's little things, you know. You yeah, know, and he's been so successful be for them. I mean, yeah. he's had five starts, but he must be so fun to be involved in. Mm, definitely. Winning the last three. Um, you know, beating one that I really like that runs tomorrow in bolt action at Ripon last time. And not every horse handles that Ripon track. It's quite undulating, isn't it? Um, I'll just go through the betting before we go through this because um, the betting there is saying that Sakir is a five to four favourite, which is the case. Now, Saki has been well touted, you know, um, on debut run, they thought that this horse was going to win and then won with any amount in hand at Haydock last time. Um, he's, you know, the horse is five to four. Should have bring ring is closest to him at nine to four and then it's seven to one and higher than that. Sam, where are you going to go for this race? Are you uh, going to put a ring on it? Um, 
I think he will. I feel like he's a very tenacious horse, and you can kind of trust him. Whereas some of these are perhaps they're going to be a little bit green class, yeah. um, because they're babies. Whereas he's like I said, he's had that little bit extra experience. Um, but just a couple I think are interesting. Um, Charon is a full sibling to last year's winner, uh, Wings of War. Um, and this horse was kind of a bit awkward at the start on debut, uh, but he managed to win by length. Then last time he couldn't give seven pounds to a quite a decent horse called Endeared. Um, so he's worth shot, looking yeah. at. Yeah. Um, and then there's some really nice bread types in here. Um, there's a half to check and challenge who was... Um, touted for the guineas at the start of the season. Um, so it's worth keeping an eye on Mustard Jab. Perhaps not for today, as you can see on the bet, and he is the outsider, but maybe giving him a little bit of time. Um, it'll be an interesting one. The one I'm drawn to is the Harry Angel Colt at the bottom, uh, Wallop. He's only had one start, um, but he finished third. He's related to one black type performer um, who was quite a two-year-old type um mm. he did win quite a lot as a two-year-old um and when wallop came third he was behind noble style who's won a group two since and then millstream who didn't didn't, didn't disgrace himself in a group three last time um so it's i just think at 12 to Great one, he's with um he's kind of, isn't he um so sorry richard hannon even better yeah. with the Mm. Olds. Um, heroism's the clon um, yeah. so obviously we know how good Richard Hannon is with two year olds and uh, I just think if he takes that level of just progression from first start to second um, as the Hannon two year olds typically do um, mm. 12 to 1 could be a good price for him to get a place it's a shame we're not getting the three runners here because I think he'd be a nice play each way at that price oh definitely a, yeah know, it is a shame it's only seven there. I mean most yeah, races that, we're looking at today have got decent sizes. I think this is the smallest one, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, 100%. So you hit the nail on the head there with Wallop because, you know, Noble Star and Millstream have both set decent standards there. And, you know, Wallop's just finished in behind. Um, and, you know, after the line, he looks like he's going through those horses. So you, yeah. I know that it's after the line. You know, some horses tend to take a bit of time to pull up. But there's definitely improvement there. There's, that was a good line of form there, and 16 to 1 looks a little bit overpriced. But, you know, you're taking into consideration a horse like Sakia, who has looked mm. so, very impressive. And that Roger Verian yard at the minute, are, they are they are flying at the moment. They, I mean, obviously, we had the St. Ledger at the weekend. Great win for Eldar Eldarov in that. Um, and then you've got should have been a ring for the, you know, Pat Dobbs is obviously going to ride that horse for the Hannon yard as well. Um who's done nothing wrong. Heroism was a nice, you know, debut winner at Salisbury on debut. Um, not really a race that I'd be playing in myself. I think Sakir is the right favourite, um, you know, mainly because of the, you know, how they are touting the horses being, a gr you know, a really, really fine um, specimen, a nice colt. But it wouldn't be a betting race for myself. Steve, would you have a bet in this one? Yeah, I like, I like the one Sam said. I like another one as well, but like what Sam said was true. Like, uh, Noble Star Millstream has, has since run fourth in Aiken behind Cheldine, who has since bolted up last week, last Sunday, and is as low as eight or nine to one for the 2000 guineas now. So, and I wouldn't be worried about the fact Hannon's going straight into a group two from a maiden. If you remember right, like Trillium, she won the group two at Goodwood straight yeah. after a maiden, and um. And then followed up in another group two last week. So I wouldn't be put off the fact that it's just had the one run in maiden class. Um, the one I do, uh, Sack here, I think is, is short based on a, based on bolting up by six lengths on on his second one. He didn't beat I, much yet. He was in total. I think it's reputation, that Stephen, and that is what it is. Yeah, he's come a big reputation. He came a yeah. big prize tag as well. And also yeah. second to uh, Magical Sunset was a hot favourite for a. Uh, one of the races last weekend, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I put it up and it flopped. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, round six, you know, it missed a break, didn't it? It's probably, mm. a, I wouldn't want to bother me knocking it too much on any second run. But no, 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 no. You wouldn't want to be taking even money about this. Um, there's plenty of horses with little bits of form. Some like, also like Wallop finished, only race once, finished third. Probably going to improve a lot. The one I like is Heroism of Clive Cox. Um, he won this with Harry's Angel, who ended up being champion sprinter. A year later, and Wings of War won it with last year. Um, 
this old Mr. Break at Salisbury uh, on his only run. And to win, if you do that at Salisbury, it's, a, it's not an easy thing to come back and win. The ones that get to the front end and they sort of nick that rail, they they sort of normally dominate the two-year-old races there, don't they? Mm, yeah. And this all got in all sorts of trouble. Um, got bumped. And come through one really well in the end. Um, and I just think there's any amount of improvement involved uh, with it. And I think it's for eight to one third favourite against two horses that I'd rather have a go at than, than be following. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And Cox is Cox is good with these, these horses. So this is this this is sort of animal where you could see possibly see a, a Commonwealth Cup horse next year, or even better if it yeah. if it, for the fact it's running it could be a good sprinter. Yeah. Thanks very much, guys. Um, selections for that. No selection from me. There's no way I am picking in that race. Um, uh, Sam, you having one? Wallop. Um, just Wallop. each way. It feels good to say that, doesn't it? It does. It's such a good name. Yeah. Wallop. <laughs> Reminds me of a character in a, in, a, in a series that I've seen, Johnny Wallop. Um, oh, God. I don't even know what the series is now, but you need to see Johnny Wallop. Um, Steve, you? I think Wallop's definitely worth a bet. But, yeah, I'm probably split stakes and back heroism with that. Stay. Stop saying heroism. It's heroism. Heroism. That's it. <laughs> Got to put you right. Got to put you right, buddy. That's the Mill Reef covered. Now we're going to go over to Scotland. Now a little bit out of kilter here in in the timings of the races because I want to do the, fir the Firth of Clyde first and then do the Silver Cup and the Gold Cup. Um, so let's have a look at the Firth of Clyde first. Um, we've got another shorts price favourite here for this Group Three up in Scotland. This is a great meeting. I mean, it's a meeting that I've never been to, but I have been to. Uh, I'd love to go to the Gold Cup meeting, actually, but I, I do like, in preference of that, the Scottish National Day, which is my one of my favourite days of the year of, of York. And ever get up to Ur, it's a lovely course. Rides a little bit like Haydock, <laughs> flat track, you know what I mean? Um, but lovely, lovely course. And you cannot get better people than the Scottish people. They are so lovely and they're very, very welcoming. I found that in Perth as well. If you've never been to Perth, that's another cracking course to go to. Um, but aside from that, let's look at the betting in this because we've got Queen Me for Kevin Ryan and Tom Eves at five to four. Steve was talking to me earlier about Bonnie Angel. I'm sure he'll go into that horse at five to one. All the time sevens, um, although it's 11 to two on the tracker going across. Maria Bramwell, who's been a little bit, you know, disappointing in them last three runs. Um, or I think been uh, disappointing. Anyway, Minotonk crew was amazing. He looked scintillating on debut and then hasn't really, you know, found that form again um, at nines. And it's 12 to 1 bar those. Um, Sam, we'll come to you on this first one. Are you a Queen Me fan? No, it's very simple mm. for me. Bonnie Angel. Um, I saw her when she won her first, so it was her fourth start, her first win under rules um, at Leicester um, under Kieran Fallon. I mean, I think her first three starts, she'd kind of just been getting to grips with the game, kind of, kind of having to think about it and learn what she had to do. And then, um, I mean, she she ran a blinder that day. She was so brave, um, produced kind of to perfection. Um, and I think uh, it must have done it the world of good, um, that kind of experience. Um, Kieran is particularly good with kind of educating these two-year-olds. And um, I she because she absolutely bolted in at Doncaster, didn't she? I was watching, yeah, I just watched the race in class and I was like, I can't believe it. She just learned Pulling the way. Train. Shouldn't Absolutely. be watching things in class, Sam. Come on. <laughs> it was a replay. It was not the actual race. <laughs> it was a shortened <laughs> clip. It was like the last 30 seconds. That's all right. I, like <laughs> um, no, but I just think she's I think she's a really, really smart filly. Um, mm. she's just kind of a typical one that's just taken a bit of time. I um, mean, they've had to be patient with her. Um yeah. and I think as well, um, She's a homebred, actually, and when she won, it the owners were there, and it meant so much to them. They had um, Harry Angel when he started his career, mm. those two starts before Godolphin bought him. Um, so she's obviously by Harry Angel as well, and uh, I just think she's very, very exciting. And uh, I think five to one, it's a great price. I mean, she has had a couple yeah. of runs in quick succession. She's not had time to kind of have a break, but... So she's already the third best of his progeny. Um, so obviously got Marshman in there, who seems really, really smart. So um, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm really excited about her. 
I share that. I share that. And I think Steve will probably say the same thing because Bonnie Angel was so impressive at Doncaster. Um I mean, if, if you if you had a if you had both of Queen Me and Bonnie Angel aside each other over the six films, I th I thought that you know the run last time from Queen Me at York, I actually thought immediately as soon as I saw her finishing, she wants seven films. That was that was my she won, Queen Me. So I said it against me. She should have won. Well, yeah, exactly. True. He was he was too busy looking at dramatized on the far out when he thought <laughs> he had it covered and he. Swing along that first run, but I was, was sickening for me. I backed it twenty to one, but you did, you did. I um, remember Stephen. Yeah, uh, but you're going against her this week, aren't you, Steve? Yeah, there's no value in it, is there? I think mm. if you look through the history of the family of that Lava Stakes, Queen Kindly, uh, there was three of them, wasn't there? All the same, all the same, all four sisters. Yeah. Um, it was obviously a planned thing, wasn't it? It was a planned thing because she hadn't run since like May or something like that, and mm. it was, and then then it was. I'm fancy. You had a couple of other runners in it, Ryan. Uh, Burke had a dramatise who won the Queen Mary. Um, she's definitely worthy favourite. You're going from like a group two, beating horses that are sort of coming out of nurseries and that. But I played Bonnie Angel one last week. You just could not be, in, you could not be impressed with it. Like it just looked like it improved the stone from from its Leicester win. Um, it's hard to know where how much it has improved or what. What it really beat, or whether it, a lot of them are over the over the over the top. You know, what I mean, we come to the back end of the year now, but she looked like she's thriving. Like, yeah, got to the furlong. It was a it was a push button job, wasn't it? It was just whoosh. And um, you get on the front net if you get on the front end here as well. Sometimes it's hard to peg them back, you know. Mm. So, there's, but, there's a few in here. I just think there's pl plenty of value in the race. Like Richard Fire, he's got one down the bottom. Barefoot Angel. And Marine Wave is too. They're both 14s and 16s. Like you get any sort of improvement out of them too. They've both won their maidens okay, you know, after decent first runs. But uh, Bonnie Angel's got that experience under her belt. And um, I think 11 to 2, I'm looking at. Looks like the yeah. best value for me. 100% the best value in, in the race, in, in my opinion. I'm sure if anybody listen, anybody listening, if you've got an opinion, then put it in there. But I think we all share, share the same opinion in this race. Um, here we go. Anna's put one in. Carmella ran a good mate race in the Queen Murray. Um, yeah, I didn't. Am I thinking that Andy said Carmella in the Queen Murray? I've got a feeling at the back of my head that Andy mentioned that, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Could have done. Um, I think we're all in agreement though for this Firth of Clyde, aren't we? Because yeah, um, Bonnie Angel. <laughs> I mean, the the value is it's the value, isn't it? That's what that's what I'm going for. Eleven to two, you saw stay. I, I'm only seeing five to one here, but mm -hmm. great price. Uh, we're all in agreement, yeah, Bonnie Angel. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Excellent. Thanks very much, guys. Um, we're going to move on now to the uh, Silver Cup. Um, notoriously, these two are one of the or two, the Gold Cup and the Silver Cup. Um, I don't know if you read the story this week, guys, about um, uh, Jim Goldie. Uh, forgetting <laughs> to enter his horses <laughs> um, basically he thought they were run on the wrong day so that was quite hilarious um and he held his hands up you know as you know he's a great he's a good guy jim but i just thought i found the story quite funny really about forgetting to enter his horses. brutally honest for me yeah it was very brutally honest i thought it was great um well let's have a look at this silver cup because there is you know take your pick uh, but i found the winner in this i'm telling you now i found the winner don't you worry, it's a massive handicap, but I've got the winner, and I'll tell you the winner very soon. But let's go have a look at that betting. Snash is eight to one with abolish, dusky lord, emperor spirit, jump the gun, lovely breeze, vintage clarets, all at twelves. This is how competitive it is. A plum fourteens with good earth, also at that price. Abarama goals sixteens, and then sixteen to one also for us. Jamera, Devil's Angel, Edward Cornelius, Hyperfocus, Mark's Choice, Roman Dragon. And then it's 20 to 1 bar those. This is very, very competitive stuff. Um, I'm going to come to Stephen first on this one. Where's your dart going for this one then, Steve? Oh, darts. I need about 10 to probably get a play stalls, but hmm. um, I'm not going to waste time bluffing or faffing around. I like, I like the look of vintage, vintage clerics is the one I've come down on. Um, there's not too many three-year-olds in the race, but he's one. He's sort of... 
he went off the ball a bit this year. He had a good two-year-old campaign. He was third in the Coventry. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't a vintage Coventry, um, but it was still the Coventry. Uh, he then ran. He's run behind Gabas in the Super Sprint at Newbury. He ran behind Lusau in the Gym Crack, and then his form sort of tailed off a bit. And um, he came back this year. Didn't look any great shakes, but he was pulling hard early in his races and missing the break a couple of times. Yeah, everything sort of seemed to come back to a little bit of. His old self last time, um, when he won at when he won at Windsor, I think twelve to one. It's a race that Richard Fye sort of target. He targets all three races, but um, I just think the three year olds might be catching up with the old. I know we've been giving a look the three year olds a lot of jip this year, haven't we? But um, yeah, there was a bit of a fight back last week, wasn't there? With a couple, mm. well, first, second, and third in the uh, in the Irish and a couple of other races, wasn't there? But um, Vintage, vintage Clarence, fourteen to one, is a is a poke. Is a poke. Is a poke. Just off topic here, and you mentioned there in Ireland. Did anyone see the Tom Daskin horse that won in Ireland today? Felix Detalis won the sales race over at uh, was it Navan or Nate? I can't remember now. I didn't see it, but I saw the race and very impressive. Anyway, Tom Daskin horse that That's went over. Good, Maybe... It's good for the team after their. Um... After obviously moving moving yards and a limited string now, yeah. got a gorgeous yard. Yeah, love that. I love where they're based. Did look a very 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 good win. Um, anyway, if you didn't see it, go and have a playback of that. It was a nice one today. Um, thanks, Steve. Vintage cars for you, St Sam. Where are you going for this ever competitive dart throwing silver cup? <laughs> I um, well, I I saw Mark's choices in there, and he's been pretty good to. To follow races at Ripon in particular, but my proper selection, I agree with Michael. I think Edward Cornelius, he's such a consistent horse. He's ran into some really interesting types. Um, he's quite an interesting cross, actually. He's by mm. Bungle in the Jungle and out of a Sea the Stars mare, and you don't see that a lot. He's the only one that's <coughs> raced, and it's just a bit, <laughs> it's quite a You don't really, I mean, I don't know what they were going for when speed and stamina. Yeah. <laughs> that's We've so wrong. Come out on the side of speed. Seven um, furlongs. That's what they're going for. <laughs> well, I think an awful lot of Keith Dalglish as a trainer. I think mm. the Sunday series showed him to absolute perfection. Um, the way he targeted races is brilliant, and I think this horse could be a similar, um, a similar kind of thing. He did run really well in the Sunday series last time out. Actually, I was really kind of encouraged by that. The and, very competitive um, races those Sunday series too. They were. They were mm. really good. And the prize money was great. I mean, I really enjoyed the entire series. I thought it was really good to have I've enjoyed on. the Sunday series. That yeah. that's it's been one of my personal highlights of the year. I've really enjoyed them. I think it's a brilliant too, idea. Yeah. I think it was brilliant. Um, like I watched ITV's coverage of it and the way they kind of let you get to know different jockeys and trainers and everybody. And Keith Dad was the one they did quite a few interviews and um he seems a sound bloke and he's very, very successful with his horses. Obviously saw the horse that um, was with the Queen out of Estimate. Um, he was so, so good. Only missed out on like this much mm. of that um, 100 grand bonus. But I do think Edward Cornelius could be a bit of a uh, a very good poke in here for um, the Dalglish team. Thanks very much, guys. Um, sorry to say you're both wrong on this one um, <laughs> because I've got the winner here of the Silver Cup. I've been doing the stats. I've been looking at this race for weeks. No, literally the last hour or so. Um, I always look at the draw, and a lot of people might disregard this, uh, but I always disregard. I always look at the draw. I disregard any horse that is drawn higher than fifteen. They're out. They're not going to win. That's it for me. You can tell in the comments that I'm wrong, but they're not going to win. I think there was one. Who won the silver cup from stall 17 maybe didn't fun little ago. roadman over there for far here it's going back a few years yeah. isn't it? i bought bielsa bielsa did bielsa win this last year bielsa won the, won the gold, gold year. from 25 yeah not i agree yeah uh sorry yeah i, I still, think still Bungle, Bungle was, Bungle 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 was i think he won it on each side yeah i'm still not having it i don't care i'm still not having it no if the horse is good enough, they're not going to be hampered by the draw. And it just depends where pace is. And I'm saying this, and I haven't actually looked where the pace is. So I've got no idea. But, you know, 
The face think- is all over, <laughs> basically. <laughs> the face is all over. I looked at that too, and it is all over, but I'm disregarding anything drawn higher than 15. Um, that's just, it's, it's my opinion. I think that drawn lower is better at her. I really do. Um, I've taken to quite a few, though, who are simply not big. For, I've taken out quite a few others who, are not, who I simply feel are not big field horses. And I got down to a short list of five, and they are Devil's Earth, drawn nine, Avago Joe at 40, drawn 14, Good Earth, who's drawn four, Bernardo O'Reilly, who's drawn five, and Woven, enigmatic Ward, Ward, Woven, should I say, at, who's drawn 13. Now, uh, notoriously a very stiff six furlong course doesn't count for much. You know, having to course form doesn't really count for much, I feel. If the handle is stiff six, they're going to get this. It's likely to be run quick. Um, you know, there's plenty of candidates in here. I, now, I noticed before in the chat, who was it who put who said that they like Good Earth? Let me look at that comment. Who was it? Demo. Demo likes Good Earth. I'm sorry, Demo, but Good Earth isn't winning. I'm sorry, mate. Um, I ruled him out mainly down to the ground. There's no rain in the forecast. Um and he's likely to be better. Well, there is. Sorry, there's no rain in the forecast, but they are expecting good ground. And his best RPRs have been on good to firm for me. And he wouldn't be for me. Um, Devil's Angels is quite interesting. Impressive in a quickly run six furlongs at head up two starts back. And then the run at Sandown, he ran with real credit. He was running wide all the way around, was staying on. I marked that performance up. And the horse's RPR this year have been better than he ever, than he ever has been. Obviously, he's an improving horse, which is more than can be said a lot about a lot in this field. Now, the one that's overpriced um, that I really like from the shortlist um, is, is Bernardo O'Reilly, who's one who can really spit the dummy out. Um, but he's one of those horses that is a typical spring and autumn horse. His best performance has been at the start of the year and the end of the season. And he's too big for me. He's 25 to 1. He ran in the Bronze Cup last year from an absolutely terrible draw. And he ran above expectations in my hand. Then the year before that, he ran again in this race in the Silver Cup. And he was doing best of the horses drawn high. Now, the biggest prob- the biggest point to this is that Daddy Todd Hope is on board. And he is three from five from riding for this yard. And that immediately pricks my ears up. Now, Danny Todd Hope, obviously, you know, you're looking at the race. And, you know, Richard Spencer won't often boot, boot Danny Todd Hope. But when he sends them north, he's going to book Daddy Todd up. Um, 25 to one each way there. And I'll just go into the other two that I also mentioned in there. You know, the reaching for cheek pieces and the tongue tie and have a go, Joe. It's the first, horse's first time at her. He's well handicapped, but he probably needs to show a bit more for me. He's certainly got a chance if he reduce, uh, reproduces that effort behind Bergerac when when, when second last September in York. Uh, and he would be one who, for me, wouldn't like a fast pace. His better runnings have been off a moderate pace. And I think he won't get that here. He did have a good, consistent model model of consistency, three-year-old campaign. I mean, and the other one, the enigmatic woven. I mean, what can you say about that horse, really? He is a hold-up horse who can, day, on these days, could trounce these. But as you see, time and time again with Roven, he's just so inconsistent. And if you're back in this one, you don't. I would only be going the place market. You'd probably get a decent price each way if you can go six places on Woven. But... For me, it's Bernardo O'Reilly. 25 to one's too big. If Danny Tudor can get the right gaps and get the right things, uh, can get, you know, I think he's got everything in his favour. 25 to one's too big for Bernardo O'Reilly. He'd be my selection. And that's the winner of the Silver Gold Cup. I thank you. <laughs> there you go. And Damo's already saying good earth, you know, it makes sense. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much. Agree, Chris. Good earth on my shortlist, but really, she really fancies Asad Jumeirah. Right, so we can lay O'Reilly then. Thanks, Demo. Cheers for that. So it's Bernardo O'Reilly for me. Demo's got a sense of humour at least. Um, you, Sam, who are you going for? Edward Cornelius. The only one issue I perhaps got with him is he does run best fresh. Like, mm. first time out in a season is when you catch him at his best. Um, but fingers crossed. <laughs> Cheers, Sam. And Stephen, you had a pork on? Vintage Clarence. Three darts for you there. All it's decent prices. Yeah. All decent prices each way, though. Um, and hopefully one of us can get a place, even sixth, something like that. Because make sure you shop about, because some bootmakers are offering seven places. So first make sure you have a look at that. Yeah, if anyone is actually going to bet in that race, some people might. Uh, let's come away from the Silver Cup, which is competitive. But this one may be not as competitive, because this is the Urg Gold Cup. And at the top of the market there, that Haggis horse, Stephen, um, 
And you know that he targets this, having won this two years ago. Wouldn't you say, Steve? You would say so, wouldn't you? But mm. he seems to have the favourite for every single handicap at the moment, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just... Yeah. And then they blame it on yard yard farm money. They don't win. Yeah, I was just thinking about one. Anyway, going off the race. What, what's happened to Al Dari, the one that won the Balmoral last year? He won a he won a little race at Adok earlier in the year, yeah. didn't he? He's been ended that, in everything yeah. Group One, but it's not been seen. You yeah. just wonder whether he'll end up in the QE two or something like that. Or mm. I don't know. Yeah, three year old nine stone one carrying less weight than all these old trucks. Um, all trogs, what are they? Yeah, it's a bit of salt, you know. They're, they're it's like me and you, Steve, when Sam's on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I've been beating once this year in a three-year-old, a hot three-year-old handicap at Newmarket. Uh, oh, he can't be back in this at four to one, can you? He's had plenty of beat in these sort of races. Well, though. they get backed off the balls, don't they? Yeah. I think Naha won a couple of years ago, but... How many times has that been favourite for races like the Stewart's Cup or the Wokingham? And... Coming right from the back of the field to Nahar did. Yeah. Bielsa, conveniently only one pound harder than last year. Um, Ooh. Not, not Where's Bielsa drawn anything. this year? 17, disregard. 17, yeah. <laughs> Comanche Falls, his day was probably the Stewart's Cup, wasn't it, for the repeat, and very nearly followed up at York. Um, Summer again, you don't know what you're going to get there. It could be brilliant, it could be... He could easily be placed. Eight-year-old Daniel Tado books again. Uh, David O'Meara seems to be winning a lot of handicaps at the moment, doesn't he? Mm. He seems to be having a clean sweep in a lot of them as well, doesn't he? First, second, yeah. third. It, it's this end of the year where he seems to do quite well, David. Yeah. Um, have you noticed Escobar in this race? Yep. You know, Escobar yes, has never, ridden, never run over six furlongs his whole career. What's yeah, he run over then? Seven and a mile. Really? Yeah. Mm. That's an interesting move because he's not. Yeah. It's not a young horse. If it, was, it? If, it was, if it was bottomless ground, you'd give him a real squeak, wouldn't you? With just to slow the others down. He was second favourite behind Bayside Boy the other day. He was, yeah. He was well beat. Bayside Boy was a shoe, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, first yeah, time yeah. blinkers. But mm. um, Escobar was unlucky in the Shreps at Goodwood. Run, it's run well all season, really. Yeah, he's been third in a couple of nice York handicaps as well. But you just see him be, being a bit too far back, didn't you? The business end, he, he could have, yeah. he'd be running on faster than anything, wouldn't he? But yeah. you said the, you said the ground's going to be good. If it was soft, you'd be no really, range, really with no range in the next two yeah. days. Oh, you think when he won a Balmoral, he just he won on a beat North North, didn't he? he was a Group One mm. winner. Um, yeah, in bottomless ground. Um, it's a quick turnaround. Three days. I think he's been running every week, Sam, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> you so, so dance lot down there. He, he won a couple of Lennox stakes back in his prime over seven. He's had a couple of runs over six. Um, Admiral D, we should mention him because Declan follows him follows him quite strongly. He backs him every time he runs. Chief of Chiefs, another one. Stewart's Cup, Wokenham, always there at bats. Normally Spencer Ridden. Comes through late. I just another one like Escobar, probably better at seven. Um, Mr. Waggy has been really consistent. He ran well again in Ireland. He's always up in the van, which sometimes suits him here because you get that big the win there, and it's hard for him to come from too far back. The one I've come down on um, is um, Andrew Baldings, also 5,000 5, to one. Graham Lee's uh, ride. Right. He's a he was a half a million uh, Frankel cult. Uh, just got yearly. up at Godwood last time, didn't he? He did, yeah. And he sort of, it was sort of, he settled and he sort of came back to form a bit like I'm sort of going down, sort of down the vintage carrots through again with this one. As a two year old, he was he was second in the Mill Reef to Elka, mate. Uh, who sadly got injured. He was a really good Marcus Tregon in two year old for Shadwell. Um, he bolted up in his maiden, he was seventh to St. Mark's Basilica in the Jewers that year. Uh, his three-year-old career was a bit of a bit of a damp squib, but you just wonder whether this has been a bit of a plan. The, the connections have won this a couple of times, haven't they? They won it with Bielsa last year, but mm. they've won a few of these sort of races with Lampang and a couple of others um, whose names I can't remember. But I think fourteen to one is a good price about this. It's it's an open price, isn't it? In an open race, but you just wonder whether we've not seen the best of him. You know, I mean, if he sort of recaptures what he was at two. 
he could be he's one of the few horses carrying less than nine stone as well. So yeah. I think he's I think he's a decent decent poke. Mm. I think bookmakers are really, really tightening those odds this year, aren't they? And you know, it says it all when you've got five horses at twelve to one and five horses at fourteen to one. That's that's how tight it is. Um thanks, Steve. Let's go to Sam now. What do you fancy, Sam? Uh, well, I, it's interesting to see Bad Dreams in there uh, for Charlie Fellows, and he's got Oshin Aura up, which uh, it'd be off interesting. Spencer, have they? Sorry, they've taken off Spencer. Yeah, must have yeah. done. Um, oh no, it's not, I'm not on about. I'm thinking about a different horse there. Sorry, usually thinking, I other ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, but any, yeah, I think she's a very classy filly. Um, she ran in the Race Naval Crown won at. Um, Royal Ascot. I mean, she was really far down the field, but you know they do think a lot of her. Um, and I just think it's interesting that Oshinor's booked on. Um, but I think I'm going to look towards the Kevin Ryan horses in this. Obviously, they did win it with Bielsa. Um, he's still remarkably well handicapped, uh, considering with that, and he's not really ran badly since. Um, obviously, I think he was a bit lucky. Um, with well, I mean. Yeah, with the draw last year being 25, I think he was perhaps a bit lucky. He's got 17 now, which is closer to your threshold. Um, <laughs> no. And um, so I think Bergerac as well was lucky last time that they didn't mm. uh, that he didn't win by more than a short head um, because, you know, he he's very consistent. And, um, gutsy, very good, sir. Yeah. Very good, see. He always tries his hardest, banged in two wins in 12 days. Um, he's gone up to 93, um, but it could have been a lot more if he'd won by further. So I think mm -hmm. they perhaps got a little bit lucky there because um, I believe it's an unchanged mark of last time, but I might be wrong mm -hmm. about that. Um, they've also got Ali Dancer in there. Um, I was at York last time out when he came third and um, his form's actually been boosted today by the horse who came uh, second, Aphilios. Um, he ran well at Yarmouth today. Um this lad's off an unchanged mark, but I think he could do it with a bit of cut, which leaves Giz a sub. Um, He's the sub. Giz a sub. I think he um, could just be one that perhaps, after running to such a high level as a two-year-old, um, he was second in a group two. Um, he's been poor since, but he was thought good enough for the Commonwealth Cup, um, mm. which I think is interesting. Uh, he was ninth behind Bergerac last time, so he does have a little bit of a deficit to make up with his stable mate um but he started the season off 106 and he's down to 99 and i just think he's kind of dropped that seven pounds in the weights this is a good opportunity for him you know you never know what's going to happen in these big field um mm. races i think he's drawn 14 so right yeah. in the middle um so yeah that's i'm gonna have a go with gives a sub they had a win all the other week kev kevin or kevin ryan with um similar colors very similar profile actually to Giza Sub. What was it called? York. Um, so I'm just gonna wrap my brains out. I'm gonna forget it. Um, Catch Cunningham, Catch Cunningham, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah similar colors. It might be the same owners actually, but yeah. Um, see you thinking, I can see you thinking. Um, oh, I was there as for per that. usual. I was there, yeah. Were you there for that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I was yeah. cheering on Matisse, who ended up fourth. <laughs> I oh, think. Never mind. Never mind. That's probably why. Check in the um, comments here. We've got Damo, who's on Bergerac. And we've got Michael Kieran O'Connor on Bergerac. And we've got John Thompson, <laughs> who also likes Bergerac. Giving a bit of ego massage, massage in there to each other, boys, aren't you? Um, Massive I've field, everybody the likes Bergerac. I mean, Ryan, <laughs> listen, I, I can't, I can't argue with you, with you there, lads. Um, Bergerac's a gutsy, gutsy horse, um, but I just can't. I, I couldn't, I couldn't back him again. I just, I don't know why. I just can't. It's not. This is not one. I, I actually do like my betting proposition in the in the Silver Cup rather than this one. Haggis's horse could turn up here for me and win doing handstands, but I wouldn't even touch him at the prices. Bielsa obviously won it last year and, you know, they're probably tailor-made for this race. Drawn a little bit better this year, even <laughs> even though he won last year from a stupid draw. Um, 5,000 to 1, like Stephen has already said, and yourself, Sam, um, won well last time, you know, just getting up on in the last stride. Would you not say that he's a little bit ungenuine, though, Stephen? Because I, I actually think you, he needs, like, coaxing, like, 
Yeah, no, he does. The front, you know, like he, he kind of sulks as soon as he gets there. No, no, I totally agree. But the fact he got his head in front last time, I'm just is a is a positive, if if only a small one. And yeah. it's just the fact that it's in this race. Like you think of some of the targets said in the past. Mm. And it's been running in, it's been sticking around listed races and yeah. It's got any off a nice weight, Graham Lee books. It, it, it could be the sort of race it needs, Chris, where there's a wall of horses and he just, like you say, he controls him along. And Graham Lee's great from the back, isn't he? Mm, yes, and, yeah. um, if he just got a weave through, you never know. He sure. might not be good enough. but. Mm. And then you've got the horse that win, runs every weekend in Mr. Wagyu, who's, you know, a model of consistency, you know. Mm. Uh, it's just a head scratcher, isn't it? I'll take a chance myself on Comanche Falls, who's, you know, course and distance winner, gutsy as they come. Um Second favourite. I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? Nothing major. I don't really have a massive opinion on this. I do in the Silver Cup. Comanche Falls will be a little one each way. It would be nice if, um, you know, Summerhand comes in and then Daddy Tullop's done the double. That would be nice. Um, But I've no real opinion on this one. Comanche Falls a little bit each way for me. Sam, go over your selection for this one. I am going with Giza Sub. Giza Sub. And Steve, you're going for? 5,000 to one. Yeah, five thousand to one. That's the price of him. That, Probably yeah, the price it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what that was named after? Say it again, mate. Do you know what that was named after? Five thousand to one. Go on. Yeah. Well, it's owned by King Power, isn't it? Leicester City. Yeah. Oh, That's what yes. price they were to win the league. Yeah. I should believe. They, it. I they, they name that. their horses so cleverly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bless them. Although I believe that Kia Jurepton can be a bit of a. To work for, but never mind. We'll not, not, not say much about that anymore. On this podcast. Uh, here we go. A little comment here from Michael Kieran O'Connor. Guys, with Lestor starting on Sunday in the first race at three year old hurdle, as Sean promised to me, Cougar as a three year old now with Padre Roche and Deep Impact Colt, who's damaged to promise, uh, damaged promise to be true. Can oh, we take anything out of this? We're gonna have to look at Lestor. That's the thing. I think Andy's actually. Michael just sent in a tip for Blistol in the 3.35 on Monday. I might as well read it out to you. Um, it is Man of Work, and that's in the 3.35 at Blistol um, this coming Monday. He said, this is a four-year-old I loved last year. Um, he kept up good company after winning his maiden hurdle, and I think he he had the 140 hurted rate, sorry, 140 rated Iker Allen dead to rights when falling two out of Ferry House. He's off easy enough on mark of 127, and Andy thinks that he'll be very disappointed if he's not fit enough. Andy did tweet before, I don't know if it's Andy in the comments if he fancies it, but there's a another horse that he thinks I'll have to look through his thing, uh, through his tweets. But have a look at Andy on Twitter, he put up a horse that, um, like it looks like a little bit of interest in placing. Um, I can't remember who it was now, maybe you might remember, I don't know if you've seen it or not, or have you seen it, Sam? Um, maybe Andy, if he's in the comments, will write there in a minute anyway. Uh, anybody else got any other best bets for the weekend? Steve, have you got anything else elsewhere? No, I wasn't sure if we were going to cover the, the race at the moment, but I, do, I really do like Staler in that race. Yeah. And um, and heroism in the, in the Mill Reef. Do you only ones, buddy? Yeah, I've sort of scoured really. I was looking at the Doomside Cup, but... <laughs> Get drawn into these horses, you're back every time. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Don't do it, Stephen, or else you'll end up falling <laughs> off that cliff. What's that horse that you follow everywhere? What is it now? The horse. Oh, God, there's loads oh, of them. It's the hand horse. What we always say doesn't get a chin it. Chin it. Oh, no, I don't. He's not. Well, <laughs> he should be steps up in trip, shouldn't he? Yeah. Anna, lovely Greyhound one today. That's awesome, Anna. Um, send us a picture, yeah. Anna. Love to see that. Send me a picture. Anna, Sam, you you to one? Sorry, say that again, Steve. Just like Anna, is she going to Ascot in a few weeks? Put in there if you can. Damo's putting the Gale Force Meyer and Golwa tomorrow. Two for himself. Um, Sam, you got anything this weekend? I completely agree about Gale Force Meyer in the 310 mm. at air tomorrow. She's um, so good, isn't she? Oh, she's so cool. She's gorgeous, Philly. Um, Can we just take a moment well. to appreciate Harfield Princess, too? Oh, queen she's amazing she's like the i feel like she's getting to the point where she's the flat equivalent of honeysuckle like that level of just adoration yeah yeah (laughs) 
that's just like you I just feel like they're very similar um they're so cool and like Jason Hart I mean I was speaking to a few people at York and they could not not sing his praises like he seems like he's the nicest bloke and just everyone just thinks he just really deserves the success he's getting um Mm. which I thought was lovely but I do have another one um a day to remember in the world trophy um is a little bit of an each way shout she um, has been cracking for the Patrick Owen yard who, uh, when I was at Yarmouth, he had a double and um, he seems like he's just such a, like he knows his horses and he speak, spoke brilliantly over like the PA system about the way he mm-hmm. prepped two com- entirely different horses. Um, and I think it's a great outfit and it'd be really nice to see him get a big winner on a Saturday. And then just a, um, just an race one that's uh Gonna pop, gonna be out on Saturday, and the one an unrest one. one, an unrest yeah. one. Did you say? Yeah, okay, yeah. go. Cool. Um, mm. Just on pedigree, um, one thirty-one at Newmarket on Saturday, um, called Doom, um, Dubawi X Dank. Um, mm. So Dank, just Dank the Michael Stout filly. Oh. Yeah, um, she's not had the best record at stud, uh, but I just think this is an interesting. I one. still spend a millions on anything she produces. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, so just worth keeping an eye on that newcomer. Yeah, I think there's one more thing. Chris Haynes, Hansel and Clark race at Newbury tomorrow. Back in the day, it was the race where you, you get your classic. You guaranteed to get sort of classic horses out of it the following year. Mm. That doesn't carry the same sort of profile, but Charlie Appleby's one tomorrow's odds on called High Bank. He was really, really impressive at Newmarket on debut. He was out the back and he quickened like a machine. Um, interested at Ryan Moore's riding, but. We, we, I'll be hoping that he'll follow up tomorrow. Hoping that we see a performance where yeah. we've got something to get our teeth into. Do you know what I mean? For races like the Jewess and the racing post trophy in the next in the next month or so, you know. Yeah, that's a huge one. That's the uh, um Ryan doesn't often ride for Charlie, does he? So that's great to see. Yeah. Um uh yeah, my selections, uh, I wouldn't I've not got a lot. Um I do like the Silver Cup. Um I am gonna do Bernardo O'Reilly each way. I think you can get six or seven places, twenty five to one Bernardo O'Reilly. I might have a little saver on Woven, you know, just in case he turns up. The enigmatic I Woven. Three or four, I expect your stakes is. Yeah. Going to go mad of you. I'll just go with them too. That's fine by me. Um, and, and also Siskani. Siskani is one of my better bets this weekend. Um, probably my next best, I would say. Um, but I have got a nap which runs tomorrow. And well, I, I have two others from the nap. The two others are running the 235 at her. One is Bolt Action. Uh, for Ben Curtis, who's taken the ride for Roger Varian, who I think was a little bit unlucky at Ripon last time, was drop, dropping back in trip. I think the horse is all pace, and I think this is the opportunity at uh, a nice flat, stiff five furlongs. Bolt action uh, should take some beating in the 235 at her tomorrow. The parent is another horse that I like in the 253 at Newbury. So the the kind of around about fifteen minutes after each other tomorrow. Ryan Moore's on board that parent won la- well last time. While it's still looking a little bit green, uh, Frankel Colt um, I'm really interested in. And then also the the nap is this horse. Now we're going jump him, <laughs> and it might be interesting that we're going jump him. We're going to Newton Abbott, and this is three twenty tomorrow. Um, now you may remember last year I gave you five horses to follow, and every single one of them won. Now this is one of them. Um, the horses for Archie Watson, uh, sorry, Archie Watson, who you would not normally associate with novice hurdlers, but Archie has a really nice type on his hands here, I feel. And he's second favourite in the betting because actually Lady Jane P is the favourite for Adrian Wintle. But Nifty Getaway is the second favourite, and Nifty Getaway is the selection, the nap this weekend. Uh, Nifty Getaway actually won at a, um, a national hunt race, a national hunt flat race, sorry, in decisive fashion, you know, in a bit of a mud splattered one but you know the i was taken by nifty getaway from the point to point run because she was actually going to win um she was actually going to win that day until falling at the last and she looked a very very nice horse and i'm glad that hamilton racing took uh well i purchased her and sent her to archie because she won a a national flat race in in very good fashion and she's always looked like she's going to take to hurdles and you know I'm 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 very imp- I'm sorry I'm very excited to see where she goes this season if to get away. I know they're starting in early, but they may be targeting something, you know, like another novice hurdle coming up in the coming weeks. Maybe even the Chepstone meeting two to one there. 
will be nifty getaway so that's three from me it's bolt action tomorrow with the parent tomorrow as well and nifty getaway tomorrow nifty getaway is the nap with the next best being Siscani on Saturday and then Bernardo O'Reilly in the Silver Cup. Those are the ones from me this weekend. Any other comments before we see off? Oh, here we are. Here's one from John. Um, Saturday, Catrick Elodora. Thank you very much, John. We'll have a look at that one, maybe off air at the moment. And Anna's there very sportingly in the comments written that she's got a spare weekend pass for the Ark if anyone wants to go with Anna. Steve, Sam, fancy going to the Ark this year? Mm, I'd love to. I yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'll be working as usual. I think that's <laughs> what Declan, this is where Declan comes in the comments. It's a, fuck, it's a bloody weekend, Telford. What are you on about? Get you have you not even got a passport? That's what they'll be saying. I actually don't. <laughs> oh <laughs> Sam. <laughs> you have to you have to get one soon. <laughs> uh shifty lad there, nice in the comments there. Ali Dancer drawn one and a three-year-old taking a bunt on him. Open the drawer bias will be low. I agree with you, Shifty Lad. Draw bias at is low. Don't you worry about that. Each way should hopefully be there with about Thanks. Cheers, buddy. Thanks very much for everyone who's joined us tonight. It's been a lovely podcast. A bit quicker than usual. We've not had the rants and the raves of Declan and Andy this week, but that's all right. Don't you worry. It's nice to have a, a quieter weekend. We miss Declan. We miss Andy. I hope they're both all right. I hope Declan's having a lovely time in France. I hope Andy's all right and we'll see him again soon. Um, but thanks very much, everyone, for joining us this week. 39 euros, Eurostar. That's quite cheap. That seems really cheap. It must be the Friday because on the yeah. or the Saturday, the Sunday, there's no train till 10 o'clock, which means you're going to miss the first yeah. two races. So it's um, well, much a reason. Nice, short, sharp and sweet this week. Um, but thanks for joining me, Sam. Thank you very much for having me. It's been great to talk to you both. It has. Yeah, it cheers, has. Man, uh, all the best for the weekend, Sam. All the best with applying for universities and things like that. I wish I was still doing that, but <laughs> instead I am just teaching children how to <laughs> wipe, wipe things and wipe the noses <laughs> and things like that, as you do. Steve, thanks for joining me as usual, buddy. Yeah, no worries, mate. Thank you. No worries, buddy. And we will see you all next week. Um, coming weeks, we've got the point-to-point -point runners. I'm going to be putting out when that's coming out. I've got a 40 point to point runners that are coming over um, from the point to point sphere, uh, ready to run in the national hunt racing uh, sphere this year. Um, that'll be coming out very soon. So keep an eye out for that and we'll hopefully um, get that out soon. And we'll see you all again next week, next Thursday. Um, well, I think it's, I think it's the Curra again next weekend. It's Champions Weekend, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, it's Champions Weekend, yeah. And obviously, it, the Stoll Festival starts on Monday, so that's oh, awesome too. Harvest Festival starting, so that'll be awesome too. I uh, can't wait. Um, have a nice weekend, everyone, and we will see you all again next week. Cheers, folks. Thank see you. Later. you.